This lesson will show how to apply slope, midpoint, and length formulas to solve some geometric problems. And in the first example here, we're asked to determine the shortest distance from a cabin, and here's the cabin at the point 83, to a road that connects campsites at 213 and 1410. And so this is the road that is being built. And it, of course, it would go up here perpendicular to this uh, road between the campsites. If it didn't go perpendicular to those, then it wouldn't be the shortest possible road. Now, in order to find how long this road is, we need to find really where this line and this line intersect, and then find the distance from 83 to that intersection point. So the first thing that we need to do is find out an equation for this line between these campsites at 213 and 1410. In order to do that, we first of all need to find the slope of that line. And so using the points 213 and 1410, 10 minus 13 is the rise, and 14 minus 2 is the run in the denominator. And so 10 minus 13 is negative 3, uh, 14 minus 2 is 12. So we get negative 3 twelfths, which of course reduces to negative 1 quarter. So the slope of this line is negative one quarter. Now we need to find the y-intercept. So this line comes over here. We can tell the y-intercept is something around between 13 and 14, but we need to be more precise than that. So in y equals mx plus b, the negative a quarter is the slope. y equals negative a quarter x plus b. And so we use one of the points. I'm going to use the point uh, 213. We could have used the point 1410 here. 13 is the y coordinate, so it goes in place of y here. And 2 is the x coordinate, so it goes in place of x. Now, negative a quarter times 2, the 2 here will divide into the 4 in the denominator, leaving a 2 in the denominator, so that will simplify to negative a half. At the same time, I can see over here that I'm, I want to solve for b, so I'm multiplying the 13 over 1 by 2 over 2. So 13 times 2 is 26, and of course the denominator, the 1 that you don't see there, times 2 is 2. So 13 is the same as 26 over 2. So I want to solve for b here, so I would add a half to both sides, so adding a half to 26 halves, we get 27 halves, which of course is... Uh, 13.5 so that makes sense so that we would have a y-intercept of 13.5 so that's the y-intercept so the equation of the road or line connecting those two campsites substituting the 27 halves in place of b here in the y-intercept we get y equals negative a quarter x plus 27 halves for the equation of this line now this dotted line here this road that we want to build uh, has to be perpendicular to this in order for the distance to be the shortest possible distance. So, since we know that the slope of this line is negative a quarter, remember lines that are perpendicular, their slopes are negative reciprocals. So, if we take that negative a quarter and take the reciprocal, we get 4 over 1. And remember, the negative reciprocal means we change the sign. The slope of this one was negative, so the slope of this one must be positive. Now, 4 over 1, of course, is the same as just 4. So this line has a slope of 4. And we know it goes through the point 8, 3. So using 4 as my slope and y equals mx plus b, y equals 4x plus b here, we can find the y-intercept by using the point 8, 3. 3 is the y-coordinate, 8 is the x coordinate, so we substitute that in place of x. And so 4 times 8 is 32. And then solving for b, we would subtract 32 from both sides, so 3 minus 32 is negative 29. And so we can substitute that negative 29 in place of the y-intercept here, and the equation of that dotted line is y equals 4x minus 29. Now that we have our two equations, these two, we really have a system of equations and we need to find out where they intersect. And then we can find, once we know that point, what that point is, we can find the distance from it to 8, 3. And we'll finish this uh, example on the next page. So flipping over to the second page, there's the two equations we found in the last page and we want to find out where they intersect. Now they're both solved for y. So I'm going to use substitution to solve for x and y here. And so 
this 4x minus 29 is what y equals in the first equation. So I can substitute that in place of y in the second equation. And so making that substitution, we're really just equating 4x minus 29 and the negative a quarter x plus 27 halves. So now we have an equation that just has x's in it and we can solve for x. So I'm rearranging, I'm bringing the negative a quarter x over to the left and the uh, negative 29 to the right. Now I change the 4x into 16 quarters x. I multiply that 4 by 4 over 4 because this 1 quarter x here has a denominator of 4. So I want a common denominator here on the left. So the 4x is 16 quarters. Same as the uh, 29. If you multiply 29 by 2 over 2, you get 58 over 2. So when I brought that over to the right side, I changed it into 58 over 2. That's the 29. And so we can add 16 quarters and 1 quarter and get 17 quarters and 27 halves and 58 halves. Add to 85 halves. And so to solve for x, I would take the 85 halves and divide it by the 17 quarters to solve for x or divide both sides by 17 quarters. You'll still be dividing 85 halves by 17 quarters. And remember how you divide rational numbers. You take the first one and you change this into multiplying by the reciprocal of the second one. So that's the same as 85 halves multiplied by 4 over 17. And we get a fair bit of uh, dividing out here. The 2 here divides into this 4 going in twice and 87 goes into 85 five times. So you're really just left with 5 times 2, which of course is 10. So the x coordinate at that point is 10, and that looks like it makes sense. The x coordinate should be 10 there. Now we need to find the y coordinate. It looks like it's around 11, but we'll verify that. And so you say, substitute the 10 in place of x in either of the two equations. I'm going to use the y equals 4x minus 29 one. And we substitute 10 in place of x. 4 times 10 is 40 minus 29 is of course 11. So the point is 10 comma 11. So we'll write that on the graph. That's the point 10 11. So all we need to do now is find the distance from 8 3 up to the 10 11 point. And we'll use the distance formula for that. And so substituting the uh, 8 3 10 and 11 numbers we of course would go underneath the uh, root inside the brackets here. x2 minus x1 would be 10 minus 8 is squared, and y2 minus y1 would be 11 minus 3 squared here. Now 10 minus 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. 11 minus 3 is 8, and 8 squared is 64. So 64 and 4 add to 68. Now we can find the square root of this and get a decimal answer, or we can write the exact answer. I'll show both here. And so remember how to write this as a, an exact radical in simplest form. Find two numbers that multiply to 68, uh, one of which is a perfect square. 4 is the largest perfect square that divides into 68. 4 times 17 is 68. And remember the, uh, the reason I'm using a perfect square is because the square root of 4 is exactly 2. It's a whole number, unlike the square root of 17 is not a nice whole number. So the root of 4 is 2, so root of 68 that's called an entire radical. In the simplest form as a mixed radical is 2 root 17. So that's the exact value. Now if, if, if you were working on this and, and for a construction company, they would not want you to tell them that the distance was 2 root 17 kilometers. But uh, uh, that for a mathematician, they might want to know the exact answer. The square root of 68 is approximately 8.25. So the distance is 8.25 kilometers if the scale is kilometers here. And so that's the shortest distance from the cabin to the road between those two campsites.